In this lesson, I'll show you how to perform the student Newman Kuhl's post hoc test. Now, before I answer the question that's been prepared, let's discuss the purpose behind this. So, say you just performed the Friedman ANOVA by rank test and concluded that at least one of the medians is significantly different from the other. We must now conduct a post hoc test to find out which medians are truly different. To do this, we can use the student Newman Kuhl's test for multiple comparisons following the Friedman ANOVA by rank. This involves calculating Q for each pair of rank sums to determine which are significantly different from each other. And to calculate Q, we'll be using the formula shown underneath. R sub A and R sub B are the sums from the two groups being compared. P is the number of groups spanned by the comparison, and N is the number of participants in the study. The resulting value of Q is compared with the critical value of Q and P comparisons with an infinite number of degrees of freedom from the Q distribution table. We'll discuss that later once we start answering the question. So the question is asking, a pilot study is conducted to measure the effectiveness of four different techniques for reducing test anxiety in students. Each student tries a different technique before taking an examination span three weeks apart. And the order that the techniques were used is randomly assigned to each student. Which technique appears to work the best? Now I'm not going to go through the Friedman technique here, the Friedman test, but if you do go through it, you should end up finding that you should reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative at 95% significance. If you'd like a demonstration on the Friedman test, we do have a video on it, so feel free to watch it. And if you'd like me to perform the Friedman test for this specific data, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll gladly make a video for that as well. Underneath this table, I've written that the sum rank for the first trial is 48. So R sub one is equal to 48. R sub two is equal to 36. R sub three is 24 and R sub four is 12. We have to find out which of these four trials are different from one another. And here's how that's done. So we will be performing the SNK technique, the student Newman Kuhl's test to determine which trials are significantly different. Let's begin by comparing T1 and T2. Remember, you have to do several comparisons here. You have to do T1 and T2, T1 with T3, T1 and T4. Then you have to do T2 and T3, T2 and T4, and lastly, T3 and T4. So six times you have to perform this test, and we'll begin with the very first one. T1 and T2. Now every time you perform this test, you have to write down a null and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that the medians for each trial are equal, that they're no different, the treatments are no different. Whereas the alternative is that they are different, and I've represented that with a not equals to symbol, and now we can calculate Q. Remember the formula for Q is shown on your screen. I will copy and paste it underneath here for simplicity. RA minus RB, RA being 48 minus 36 over, and we have the square root of P. Now P represents, as stated up here, it represents the number of groups spanned by the comparison. So if we look back at the table, these two are next to each other. So you would have a p-value equaling to two. If we're comparing T1 and T3, then there are three columns that span from T1 to T3. So the p-value, if you're comparing T1 and T3, would be three. And the p-value, if you were comparing T1 and T4, would be four. The same idea applies if we were comparing T2 and T4. That would have a p-value of three. Comparing T3 and T4 would have a p-value of two. Hopefully you get the idea there. N represents the total number of participants. So in this case, it's 12. 2 plus 1 over 12. 
We'll calculate Q and compare it to the critical Q value, which I'll show you how to find in a table in a moment. So using our calculator, 48 minus 36 makes 12 divided by the square root. And within our square root, we have 2 times 12 times 3. 2 times 12 times 3 divided by 12. That equals to 4.898, 4.898. And now we have to compare this with the critical Q value. You need a table that looks something like this. And since we're comparing two groups at a time, we'll look at this column. And the degrees of freedom will be infinity. So that's 2.77. Q sub C or Q critical is 2.77. 4.89 is greater than 2.77. This means that we'll be rejecting the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. Therefore, the medians of trial one and trial two are statistically different. All right, now that we found the conclusion for T1 and T2, you should come up with the same conclusion if you compared T2 and T3 and T3 and T4 coincidentally. In other words, you would have gotten the same Q value of 4.89, and so you would come up with the same conclusion. What if we were comparing, let's say, T2 and T4? As mentioned already, the p-value here will not be 2, so things might change. Let's find out. Remember to rewrite your hypothesis, your null, and your alternative, and don't forget to change the subscripts so that this is a 2 and that's a 4 and that's a 2 and that's a 4. Let's calculate Q very quickly. We have for T2, 36 minus 12. That's the numerator. And in the denominator, since this represents three columns from T2 to T4, we will have a p-value that is 3, again 12, for the 12 students in this experiment. 3 plus 1 is 4, over 12. Calculating q, you should end up with a value that is 6.93. And the q critical, looking back at our table, since p is 3, we have 3.31 this time. 3.31. Q is greater than QC. Therefore, reject the null hypothesis. They are statistically significantly different from one another. And coincidentally, the same conclusion applies when comparing trial one and trial three. Let's do one more. If you were to compare T1 and T4, you should end up with a Q value that is 8.05. And remember, the value of P would be 4 in this case, since it's four columns spanning from trial 1 to trial 4. The Q critical for that would have been, we're in this column now, 3.63. Again, this value is greater than 3.63 you would reject the null in favor of the alternative. So this means all these techniques to reduce anxiety before a test are significantly different from one another. And so there you have it. Now you know how to perform the student Newman-Kuhl's post hoc test.